So uh, we've talked a little bit about temperature before. Yes. But I, I just want to just sort of do it again. But all right. I, I think the you know ten minutes just isn't enough time to say everything you need to say. So, about temperature, we're still talking about temperature. That's correct. Okay, that's correct. So let me first tell you, in the world of physics, what temperature is. Okay. Oh, okay. Temperature only has meaning when you have an ensemble of particles that are vibrating. Okay. 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 So, so okay. You can ask uh, how fast is everything vibrating. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you get, oh, how fast is this one and this one and all sort of moving in, in different directions like the molecules in a gas cloud or even, even in a solid object, the particles are vibrating. Okay? Right. And you can ask, what is the average kinetic energy, energy of this motion of all those particles? So, okay, let me just ask then. Do those vibrations from these particles produce some type of measurable energy like heat? Yeah, so they bang up against your thermometer, and then the thermometer gives you a reading. Oh, okay. that is, that's kind of dope. That's I'm dope. liking okay. it so far. Th that's okay. So we're clean on that, right? Uh, yes, yeah. No problem. Okay. So what happens if you don't have any particles? Um. You should be really chilly. Like <laughs> you, you need a glass of, you need a cup of tea. It means you're chilling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're so chilling. Yeah, no, you no. Just, yeah. No. And how I, do you measure the temperature of something? If you don't have no a vibration, particles vibrating against it. So what happens in that case is because the vibrating molecules or particles are not the only thing that can put energy to your thermometer. Okay. Okay. All right. Light can do the same thing too, or electromagnetic energy, which would includes light, right? Okay, a visible light. Okay. So light goes to your thermometer as well. All right, but your th thermometer has to be able to absorb it in order to then get a temperature for you. Okay. All right. If you're trying to find the temperature of the visible light in this room, mm -hmm. and your thermometer is made of transparent glass. The visible light goes right through the glass, and you won't get the temperature of that light. Okay. So, so it's temperature is not a completely obvious thing under certain circumstances that are that are not even much of a stretch. Okay. So I'll give you another example. I once calculated, dare I say, famously calculated, how long it would take to cook a. 16-inch pepperoni pizza, pepperoni pizza on the windowsill of your home on the planet Venus. Okay, is this gluten-free we're talking? <laughs> and did you make that calculation? <laughs> I, I didn't do the gluten factor. Uh, the, okay. Gl the gluten correction I didn't make. All right. right. So here's what happens. The atmosphere in Venus has like 100 times as many particles in it per volume. So it's 100 times as dense. Oh. So. So there you have an, your pizza in the oven, and there's hot air hitting it. But I have 100 times as much hot air hitting it. Okay? All of so Venus that, is one big convection pi oven. Pizza, pizza oven, right? So yeah. there it is. All right, but, and the air is hotter. Okay? Oh, okay. The air is like 900 degrees Fahrenheit. So, so and a pizza oven is only around 500 degrees Fahrenheit. So, <laughs> so... What, you have 100 times the atmospheric uh, contact and 500 more Fahrenheit degrees uh, to boot. So I calculate if it takes 15 minutes to cook a pizza and you do the fractions and you do this right. I did it. I got about seven seconds, between seven and nine seconds oh. to cook a pepperoni pizza. Well, no, and, and we'll be there in 30 minutes or less. Guaranteed, <laughs> baby. <laughs> Guaranteed. <laughs> well, yeah, there's a, between seven and nine seconds around there. So then, as I've told you before, the geek spectrum knows no limits mm -hmm. in who's, and who occupies it. All right. As I say that all the time when our good friend, Charles Lewis. Charles Lewis aboard. Right. right. So I put this out there and I and somebody called me out and said, Dr. Tyson, you neglected the radiant energy just from the gas being hot. 
that's in addition to the molecular contact energy that's going on at the pizza surface. Uh. And if you included that, the pizza gets cooked in like two or three seconds. Right. Not the seven seconds. So it's not only the transfer of heat from the vibrating molecules, there's the infrared light that's coming out of the warm oven. Not only the air itself, but the walls of the cavity. That's why pizza ovens are brick ovens, right. because right. the, the ideal ones, because the oven is radiating to the pizza right. on top of the air. Yeah, everything around it is hot, not everything just the air. Everything around it is everything. hot. So it's it's it so the pizza is lose is 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 gaining energy from the air molecules directly and from the walls of the oven indirectly because of the radiant um uh, influx of, of infrared in that case. Okay. So there's these two ways. So if you have a thermometer in the vacuum of space, right? What matters is how much of the photons of light is the thermometer absorbing. So if you wrap the thermometer in reflective mylar, then the temperature will just keep dropping until it reaches the temperature of the whole universe, which is damn near zero degrees, right. Kelvins, Kelvin. ab absolute yeah. zero. So the temperature has to do with what are you wearing? Are you? Oh, wait a minute. We've oh, heard this I, before. I'm sorry. I, I thought we were doing that thing. <laughs> well, you know, Chuck, what are you wearing? What are you wearing? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's who are you wearing, Chuck? Yes, yes. Right. Oh, yeah, okay. I forgot. Yeah, that's the red you, carpet way. Did you wear it? Well, so when they say wear lighter clothes in the summer, right? what they're saying is the air will have whatever temperature it does, but you don't want to, and it's going to be hot probably, but you don't want to add to that by absorbing light from the sun because mm -hmm. that will just add more temperature. That's why in the summertime, I just wear bike reflectors. <laughs> if you do that, I just then walk the, around with bike reflectors on. That's all you'll get. If, if, so if you just clad your body with bike bicycle reflectors or something that is good at reflecting sunlight, which could just be, uh, by the way, it's been rumored that, you know, all futuristic sci-fi um, space things that people wear, they're always reflective. You have a yes, silver they're ring. always silver. It could be because they're living too close to their host star <laughs> and they have <laughs> to keep reflecting it off to stay cool. Point is, you cannot speak singularly about the temperature of the air in any way that matters to you if you're also exposed to light that could be absorbed by what you're wearing. Uh -huh. So in the winter, it's cold out. You want as much extra energy as you can get. So wear dark clothes. The dark clothes absorb sunlight. And then the temperature inside your clothes goes higher than would otherwise be if it was just if we were just measuring the air. Right. So and I'm that, just saying that, that's that is why in the wintertime I hang out with my black friends and in the summertime <laughs> I hang out with my white friends. <laughs> and I'm always <laughs> at in the, the right Goldilocks. I'm in the Goldilocks spot always. <laughs> <laughs> and in the fall and winter, you say, oh, can you back up a little, come a little? No, you move right. away. Exactly. And you, and no, you have in the, the zone. In the, in the fall and spring, I just hang out with Puerto Ricans. So. <laughs> <laughs> Man, Chuck is going to get this show canceled. And <laughs> come on, people. Y'all can't get mad at that. Come on. That, that was pretty funny. That was yeah. good. <laughs> so I'm just saying temperature is just a little more complicated than you might otherwise think. Right. That's all. It's not just what is the air, it's how fast are your molecules vibrating and what is causing that to vibrate. And the air is how we usually think about it, but other things can make that happen as well. So that that's what I'm saying. And, and there are rules about the thermometer that gives you the official weather, weather service temperature. That thermometer is in a shadow. It's not open to the sunlight. Ah. Okay, in fact, I, I used to do this when I was growing up. I think they've corrected this. So the bank temperature time signs, you know, you, they used to be on all I banks. I remember time and temperature. Time and temperature, right? I would look at bank time and temperatures that were in sunlight and bank time and temperatures that were in shade. 
and the official air temperature might be 90 degrees, the bank thermometer would say 105 degrees. It's like, no, it's not, okay? Because you're sitting out in sunlight. Right. And you're absorbing the sun on top of the air temperature. So that misrepresents what you would feel standing in the air, but in shadow, in the shadow of a tree, for example. That's and it. when you walk under a tree, say, oh, it's cooler under the tree. The air is the same temperature. So, Chuck, why is it cooler under the tree? Well, the absence, same as the shadow temperature. It's the absence of the light being directly on you. It's the absence of the light that you would be absorbing that would make you feel hotter. It's not just a feeling. You're actually hotter than the air temperature when you're absorbing the sunlight. Wow. That, there you go. That's pretty cool, man. Yeah, so that's just, so temperature, I, mean, I could go on and on. There's a lot more to temperature than just a reading. That's c correct. Correct. And one thing I've said in multiple shows, and I'll say it again, the fact that you can see the sun in the daytime, all right, that's an obvious fact. Right. Means the sunlight is moving through the atmosphere, and the atmosphere is transparent to sunlight. Okay? It's a visible light, at least. So, and the visible light is where the sun's energy peaks. So if the atmosphere is transparent to the sun, the sun is not heating the air because the energy is going straight through it. Right. Oh, man. I mean, well, there you go. Okay. Wait, wait. It's, so, it's, what, okay. It's, oh, wait, so then, the, then what does it finally hit? At the ground. The ground. And then the ground warms up and then the ground is in physical contact with the air and the ground heats the air. So, Chuck... Holding aside an exotic upper layer of the atmosphere, what I'm generally telling you is, what is the hottest part of the Earth's atmosphere? Uh, right next to the ground. Right next to the ground. And as you ascend, the temperature drops. As we all know, if you paid any attention at all to the data on the screen in an airplane, and what's the temperature outside the airplane? 40 below zero. Right. So Icarus had it all wrong. <laughs> He didn't fly too close to the, right. His wings would have froze. Frozen. Would, then he would have fell. They, they knew nothing about thermodynamics right. when they invented the story of Icarus. That's pretty cool, As he man. ascends to get close to the sun, he would have been farther away from the sun's source of heat on Earth. And the temperature would have dropped and dropped, and his wings would have frozen and cracked. He still would have fallen. Um, <laughs> but for different reasons, okay? All right, Chuck, we got to call it quits there. That's very cool. I'm so, uh, who knew? that was yeah. so, You always surprise me, man. You always surprise me. That's the I, whole point I, of these. I <laughs> guess. I, yeah. I didn't think we could get this much out of temperature. Oh, yeah, but temperature's a lot yeah, going on. I, I, I didn't, who knew there was this much going on with temperature? And let me just say, if you go high enough in the atmosphere, you reach the ozone layer. Right. What, what does the ozone do? Oh, it protects us from radiation and, and, yeah, from, from and harmful, rays, from, harmful rays of the sun. Okay, so to protect us, it means it absorbs it. Nice. Okay, so tell me about the temperature of the ozone layer. It, it, it must be really hot. It gets because, hot. And yeah. so, in fact, if you look at the temperature profile of our atmosphere, the temperature drops until you get to what we call the thermosphere, and the temperature goes back up. Because in that layer, the chemistry of the atmosphere is absorbing ultraviolet rays from the sun. And that heats that layer gotcha. and protects us down here on the surface. That's very cool. There you oh, go. There you go. All right. Well, well, the only thing I really took away from this whole thing is that on Venus, no one ever says, who touched the thermostat? So. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, delivered in 30 minutes or less is way too long if they don't cook your pizza in <laughs> four seconds. Exactly. <laughs> Nice. All right. That's it, Chuck. We're out of here. Okay. Start talk. Keep looking up. <laughs>